What's up YouTube, Dad with a bike. And in today's video, we're gonna cover a subject. Actually, we're gonna talk about a helmet. I said I'd never buy again, but I did, whatever. I know people are out there, be like, you got all these videos that said the Rurock helmet brand suck. Why'd you go off and buy another one? Well, in this video, we're gonna break down why I'm gonna explain what drag, drug, drag, dragged, whatever, what got me to come back and look at them again. So y'all stick around, this will be a good one. For those of you who have been haters of Rurock, like me, stick with, the, with me in this video. We're gonna walk through it, and I'm gonna tell you at the end whether or not I think this is a good buy or a bad buy. So stick around. Alrighty y'all, thanks for sticking around. If Do me a favor, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, throw me a like, give me a comment. After you've watched this video a little bit, give me your thoughts. What do you think about Rurock in general or even their attempts to making this next version of their helmet solid? I don't know, I'm interested to hear what y'all think. So I have a whole series of videos on issues that I've had with Rurock over the past couple of helmets that I've gotten from them. 2.0 that I got, Berserker that I got. I ended up getting a 3.0 from them. They sent it to me because of all the issues that I was having with like the 2.0 and the Berserker, but I didn't do a video on that one because when I got it and I actually looked at the quality of the 3.0, it was just garbage. There was just no way that I was gonna use that helmet or keep it. As soon as I pulled out of the box, things just were weird, it fit weird, the cheek pads were crap, the cheek bags were cutting into my face, and yes, my helmet fit correctly. I know how to size my helmet, and it was just garbage. Things were loose in the helmet, the seal kind of around the bottom, there's a little plastic seal that goes around the bottom, that started just to peel off, so just in general, quality issues with the 3.0 was just horrible in my experience. Experience. And that only exacerbated my distaste for the company given that I've had those issue with the 3.0 and the 2.0 and the Berserker and I guess I'm just a glutton for punishment because here we are with the 4.0. But with the Ford Auto, my question is going to be, is it gonna be better or is it different? If you look at what some of the other folks have said so far that are not the big YouTube names that have always stood behind Rurock and said, it's the best helmet in the world, raw. It's crap, that's not true, because it's not. There's all kinds of issues with it. I'm not gonna get into that, but whatever. That's how Rurock was choosing to market their stuff. But there were a few others out there that were not Rurock loyalists that were honest to goodness reviewers of products like gears and gadgets. And he did one, or he recently did a video where he went out to their launch event on his own, they didn't pay him, to review the helmet. And he did, and he came back and said, oh my God, I think this helmet is a contender with the RF 1400. And he even came out and he said, this may become his uh, everyday helmet. Now, Rurock kind of did him wrong on how they decided to go about marketing his videos, basically making it look like it was a paid for thing or whatever. I hope he sorts that out. And Rurock, if you're watching my video, come on, don't do people like that. Get their permission first. But I'm not here talking about the company. We will in a second, because I, I, think, I think the company the company itself, its future weighs on whether or not you should buy this helmet, but we'll get into that for a second. I actually want to talk about the helmet itself. So let's take a quick look at what the Rurock 4.0 looks like. We'll do a quick walk around. And I specifically picked up the Fenrir version. So check this out and let me know what you think. guys so you know clearly the helmet is beautiful I mean Rurock has always made amazingly beautiful helmets it's just for me it's always been kind of a quality issue with some of their previous helmets but I'll be honest with you I think from a quality perspective this time around they've got it right but before we get into the quality let's talk about safety the whole purpose you buy a helmet and that's to protect your noggin so how safe is this in comparison to the other ones well so first and foremost I'm gonna read the back of this so this one is DOT which I mean DOT that's not exactly the best safety rating for to live by a helmet but what they have gone and done is adopted the most recent ECE standard so right now they 
they are sitting on, on ECE R2206. Now this is the most recent ECE safety rating. And there is a lot of requirements into that. I didn't spend a whole lot of time reading all the different requirements for this new ECE, but I do know that it is a, it is a far more strict safety set of safety requirements than there has ever been for any of the ECE ratings in the past. So from a safety perspective, they've kind of knocked that out of the park. So let's jump in and we're gonna look at kind of the fitment of the helmet. Maybe we'll talk about some of the other features that they've added, talk about the comfort. And then that one thing that seems to annoy a lot of people, it annoyed the piss out of me, was the noise level on these uh, Roo Rocks. So we're gonna talk about that too. So let's uh, throw the helmet on and then we'll walk through it and talk about it a bit. Alrighty, I'm probably pretty muffled, but I'm sure you guys can still hear me. So bam, I've got the helmet on. I've already got my chin mount on here for my GoPro uh, because I'll be honest with you right now, I'm going to tell you this is going to become my daily helmet. This will be my go-to helmet from now on. I'm actually going to uh, give my Shoei RF 1400 to my wife and let her use it for stuff when she and I go out for rides or whatever. Uh, I'll still have it as a secondary helmet, but I'm going to go right now and tell you I like this helmet better than my Shoei RF 1400. Now that's my opinion. So don't be like, oh my God, Dad with bike set is the best helmet in the world. I'm going to go buy that and replace my helmet. You know, don't do that. If you've got an RF 1400, there's no reason to go buy a new helmet. I'm just stupid and decided to get this new helmet for you. It's for scientific purposes. It's so I can bring you all the, the content you deserve and tell you whether or not this stuff companies are releasing are really worth your money. And I'll tell you, this one is. But let's dive into all the little details. So now with this helmet, what I ended up getting, um, and with any and all Roo Rocks, you get two visors. You get a clear one, and then you get this dark visor. The one thing that I can say is about the visor opening and closing. It is more uh, noticeable uh, with how it gets closed. So how it raises, it's got lots of different lock points as it goes up. And then as it goes down and you lock it, used to they had this little pin thing that they kind of fixed-ish in the uh, 3.0, but I think it's much better in the 4. And it does a pretty good job at locking and keeping the wind out. So like with all Roo Rock, the, you know, the, the thing that has always been great about Roo Rock is the field division. So when I'm going down the highway and I've got my visor down, my field of vision is pretty insane. I've never had a better field of vision in a helmet than I have in a Roo Rock. So that's always been a massive plus for the Roo Rocks themselves is the field of vision um, for your peripherals have been amazing. Now securing the helmet is still done with the same Fidlock thing. I'm not a fan of the Fidlock. I mean, it's okay. I don't mind it. Maybe it's just the old school me that wants the D-ring, but it's fine. You know, it's very easy to secure and it's very easy to undo. You know, that's kind of cool. It doesn't come off very easily, so it's not something that's just gonna like plop off while you're riding down the road. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now from a comfort perspective, they have done an amazing job with the new lining that's in this helmet. It is by far the best lining that they have ever put in the helmet. And I will argue it is way more comfortable on the inside than in my Shoei RF 1400. I was ridiculously surprised at how comfortable this helmet was. Now, because this is that new ECE standard, there are some weird sizing paradigms you've got to look through. Make sure if you're going to buy a Roo Rock, you follow their sizing standard. Just because you think you wear a medium, you may not actually wear a medium in Roo Rock anymore because they've got multiple sizes now in order to adjust and meet this new ECE standard. So they've got a thing on their website for how to size it correctly for your noggin. Follow that if you're choosing to get a Roo Rock. But like I said, the liner in this thing is fantastic. I don't, I can't shift it around like I could that 3.0. Like when I would put the 3.0 on, I mean, I could like shift that whole helmet around my face and that was a medium and I know my helmet size. So that was annoying. And then when I got the larger cheek pads to try and solve that problem with like the 3.0, like then I couldn't fit the damn thing over my head. It was weird. It was just like, it was just so poorly designed and just horribly uncomfortable. Not the case with how they've done this new liner. Like I, I love this liner. So comfort for me, like I said, man, I can't, this is crazy comfortable. I, I, I can't say it enough. Like it just, it baffles me how this helmet is so much better. Hundreds, thousands of times better than their previous versions. So wind noise, how about we talk about wind noise? The thing that baffled me the most about this thing in the beginning when I had the two, not this helmet specifically, but when I had like the twos and whatever was the wind noise. So damn noisy, so loud. You couldn't even hear yourself think. I had to wear earplugs all the time. And it's just, I didn't like the amount of wind and the noise that was generated in the helmet. Now, wind noise is something that's very suggestive. Like what's noisy to me may not be noisy to you, but I could tell you that the Roo Rock previously were just obnoxiously loud. This one is quieter than my Shoei RF 1400. I kid you not. Uh, I've taken this on a really long ride. Well, I say really long. I did a few hundred miles. And when I would do a few hundred miles with my Shoei, it was comfortable, but I'd have to wear some earplugs because I got this weird sensation in my ears from time to time that I just wore earplugs because it was more comfortable. 
I don't have to with this. The noise level in this thing is so dampened. They did a hell of a job with blocking out the wind noise in this helmet. I don't, I don't know what they did that was different, but whatever it is, they fixed the wind noise problem for me. I can wear this helmet now without earplugs. And even with my exhaust right next to my face, it blocks the noise out so much. Uh, it's amazing. I can't say enough about how good the noise cancellation, I don't know noise cancellation is the right word, but how quiet this helmet is compared to what it was and even compared to my Shoei RF1400. Now, one of the other things that I also did when I got this helmet was I decided I was going to do the shockwave. I had heard a lot of complaints about the, you know, the shockwave and how crappy it was. And, you know, it's different this time around especially with how quiet this helmet is. So I got it. And I can tell you, I am really, 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 really satisfied with the shockwave. And I like it because it's keeping things clean. And the only reason why I didn't get it before was because the helmet was so damn loud that having speakers in my helmet didn't make sense because I couldn't hear the music. I couldn't hear anything. But this time, since this helmet is so much quieter and that shockwave going in, oh my God, it's awesome. It's like a symphony in my helmet. I love it. I can't say enough about how great this helmet now is with how quiet it is with the shockwave installed. Hands down, better music acoustic or better sound acoustic when I'm wearing this listening to music than I'm wearing my Shoei RF 1400 and listening to music. All right, so I guess now the question is, should you buy it? Well, let me put it to you like this. Um, I have concerns about Rue Rock as a company. I don't know how well they're doing. Maybe they're doing great. I don't know. But the way that they've historically done their marketing schemes and that kind of stuff has been a bit much, a bit over the top. And I haven't been a fan of it. So the only thing that I would ask is whether or not the company is, is, is going to be around to be able to handle, you know, the whole demand for the helmet. And can they really support them? You know, I don't know. They've had shipping issues in the past. They didn't have shipping issues with this one. Like I ordered it and then four days later it was here. So I had zero shipping issues with this one. We'll see what happens as the popularity of the 4.0 goes up and whether or not they end up having shipping issues, they very well could. But that's always been an issue with Rurock because they ship from the, U from the UK to the US. You can't get them in the US. They don't go through a reseller. So to me, that's a problem. You always get it directly from Rurock themselves. There's no way to get it from a store or something like that, which is also the downside when you're gonna you know, try to get a helmet you wanna do it fitted. You, you wanna go try it on and see how it fits. You can't do that with Rurock. But I can say that they have changed like their shipping provider. They have changed, you know, how they handle this stuff. They keep them in stock now. So they do a little bit better job at like turnarounds from when they do ordering and when they ship and when you get them. But putting the shipping issue to the side, do I think that this is a worthy helmet of buying? I absolutely do. I now think that this Rurock 4.0, if they take this as the base and they continue to improve from here, uh, you know, they've got something. This to me is, is, is the best helmet helmet that I have put on and have worn for an extended period of time. And long time it was a Shoei RF 1400 but I honestly think this beats out my Shoei RF 1400 so to me and in my opinion absolutely it's a great helmet and you know it's even better when you put the shockwave in you know and, and and you're able to use that audio system and communication system that come with the shockwave you know as how you're going to handle music or making phone calls downside is of course the shockwave that your buddies are all wearing Senna's or Cardo Pack Talks or whatever you know, you can't really do the connecty thing and whatever. Maybe somebody knows how and I just don't. But to me, that's not that big of a deal. Now, the helmets are expensive. There's no doubt. Like all in, if you buy the helmet, if you get a pin lock, and if you get Shockwave, you're going to spend upwards of $750, $800 for the helmet. Now, that is comparable to what I've gotten into my Shoei RF 1400 because I've got the helmet. Plus, I have the transition lens on the Shoei RF 1400 too. So, I'm already at that same price point with my Shoei. So, Rurock is now in that top tier helmet space and they're really you know the question i guess you could ask is should they be there now and in my opinion yes they should uh, i can tell you that with this helmet you stand it next to a showy an awry that's the same price point that's in that same uh segment i think you're gonna have a hard time passing up on the rurock 4.0 that's my opinion i'm sticking to it i've kind of changed my mind i've ate my own words and saying i'll never spend money on you again and did but hey it's for the benefit of you all at any rate you all have a good one. You all stay safe. Drop a comment. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know what you think in general about anything. If you guys have stuck around to the end, do me a favor and go follow on to one of these other super awesome videos and playlists. Keep on watching, helping grow the channel. I love y'all. Y'all be safe. Peace.